imminent. SpaceX's Golden Key, the Crew Dragon spacecraft, is set to bring two stranded Starliner astronauts safely back home. This mission not only highlights the extraordinary success of Dragon, but also serves as a stark reminder of Boeing Starliner's bleeding wound after failing the first mission. When will the two Starliner astronauts finally get rescued? While Starliner falters, how far ahead has SpaceX's Dragon come? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. SpaceX's Crew Dragon has been a resounding success for both the company and NASA's commercial crew program. After ending a nine-year gap in U.S. crewed launch capability, the spacecraft has become the de facto leader in the growing commercial orbital economy. In addition to rotating NASA crews to the ISS, Crew Dragon has completed five privately funded missions to date, with crews ranging from international astronauts to SpaceX employees. This triumph sets a high bar for any spacecraft in the U.S., and so far, none have come close to replacing it. However, in light of SpaceX's dominance in crewed launches, NASA, the leading U.S. space agency, has expressed dissatisfaction with the monopoly and hopes Starliner and other spacecraft can join in diversifying the market. Sadly, Starliner has not only failed to formally enter the ISS race, but has also earned the reputation of a cursed spacecraft, stranding astronauts on the ISS and forcing Crew Dragon to come to the rescue. Starliner's first crewed flight was planned for June of 23. Astronauts Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams were scheduled to spend 8 to 10 days aboard the station. However, multiple issues with Starliner raised NASA's concerns, leading them to leave the astronauts on the ISS as a precaution. The spacecraft returned to Earth unmanned in September. That same month, SpaceX's Crew-9 Dragon launched with a crew of two astronauts in two empty seats, specifically to bring Wilmore and Williams back to the Earth in February of this year. Crew-9 marked SpaceX's 15th crewed launch, including eight previous ISS crewed rotation missions, the Demo-2 test flight for NASA, three private astronaut missions to the ISS for Axiom, and the private Inspiration4 and Polaris Dawn missions. This Crew-9 mission underscores SpaceX's remarkable success and Boeing's glaring failure in fulfilling its commercial crew contract. The Dragon spacecraft for the mission, named Freedom, carried just two astronauts to the ISS instead of the usual four, leaving two seats open for Wilmore and Williams' return journey. The empty seats on Freedom are a stark reminder of how poorly Boeing was handling its commercial crew contract, highlighting SpaceX's extraordinary triumph over a company with over a century of aerospace history. This mission further cements the shift from the old guard to the rise of the new space era, led by SpaceX. On a broader scale, the mission symbolizes a peaceful collabo between Americans and Russians to rescue the two NASA astronauts. Despite geopolitical tensions here on Earth, this cooperation showcases the apolitical nature of space exploration and offers a hopeful vision of peace and unity in pursuing humanity's loftiest goals. As for Starliner, NASA and Boeing have yet to announce concrete solutions for the issues encountered during its first crewed flight, including helium tanks and propulsion system malfunctions. An October press conference was held to address these problems, but the outcome was vague and failed to provide clear answers, reflecting the slow pace of Boeing's post-launch evaluations. We're just starting that, just trying to understand how to correct and rectify the issues that are on the table, said Richard Jones, Deputy Program Manager of NASA's Commercial Crew Program at Johnson Space Center in Houston. The schedule associates with how long and what will be required in that area in front of us, and we'll be working hard on that to know. This means Dragon will remain the sole vehicle handling all crewed launches, at least through the end of this year. Given Boeing's Starliner's sluggish pace of research and development, this outcome is indisputable. Although some solutions have been proposed, it's likely that the next crewed flight, whether Starliner 1 or another test, will be delayed until late this year or even next. This delay significantly diminishes the chances of completing all six crewed missions under Boeing's 2014 contract, especially with just five years left on the ISS's planned retirement, also jeopardizing the potential nearly $2 billion in revenue that NASA could give for those missions. In 2014, NASA gave Boeing a contract worth $4.2 billion. Subsequent amendments have added $400 million to the agreement. 
To date, $2.7 billion has been paid, leaving almost $2 billion for future services on operational flights. However, this figure still exceeds the $1.5 billion loss Boeing's already incurred on the program. NASA has yet to decide whether to require Boeing to conduct another test flight to ensure safety before certifying Starliner for operational missions. Any decision, whether yes or no, will involve a trade-off between safety and time. Currently, only three of six contracted missions have been confirmed as ordered. In theory, NASA places these orders two to three days before the mission launches. Therefore, Boeing may only complete a maximum of three missions within the six years remaining before the ISS's retirement in 2030. On the other hand, if NASA allows Boeing to prepare additional Starliner missions beyond the three that are already on the books, this would conflict with NASA's existing plans. SpaceX, for instance, wants to introduce the fifth Crew Dragon spacecraft to its fleet next year. NASA wants to order more Dragon missions in addition to the 14 already contracted under SpaceX's commercial crew agreement. As a result, the agency only needs a handful of Starliner flights to maintain a full staffing on the ISS through the end of the decade. That said, Starliner in any scenario remains kind of outdated machine with no real future. While Boeing struggles to keep it operational, SpaceX's Dragon has evolved into an entire fleet, with plans for impressive upgrades set to roll out in the new year. Each second-gen Dragon spacecraft is assigned a serial number in the form of C2XX, encompassing both Crew Dragon and Cargo Dragon. Three Crew Dragon prototypes were built under the name C201 to C203, along with two more that are no longer operational. C204, which got destroyed in a test following its Demo-1 flight to the ISS, and then C205, which only flew during an in-flight abort test. The current active fleet includes C206 Endeavor, which first flew Demo-2, C207 Resilience, Crew-1, C210 Endurance, which debuted for Crew-3, and then C212 Freedom, which first flew Crew-4. C208, 209, and 211 are unnamed cargo dragons. SpaceX initially halted the production of Dragon spacecraft in March 2022 after completing Freedom, capping the fleet at four crew dragons. However, just a few months later, in November 2022, SpaceX announced plans to build a fifth spacecraft, C-213, citing increased demand from both government and commercial sectors. Despite this, the company made it clear that it prefers to operate with a fixed Dragon fleet as it redirects resources towards Starship envisioned as the all-purpose vehicle for SpaceX's future needs. In 2020, NASA and SpaceX began exploring the reuse of Crew Dragon and Cargo Dragon for NASA missions, initially targeting five flights of spacecraft. Spacecraft with the highest flight counts were excluded from NASA missions, a policy also applied to the company's Falcon 9 boosters. Today, Endeavour leads the fleet with five flights and is currently docked at the ISS for NASA's Crew-8 mission, a notable departure from earlier policies. However, Endeavour's future missions remain unconfirmed, and it's expected to retire upon its return. Meanwhile, Resilience, Endurance, and Freedom have each completed three flights. In March of this year, NASA and SpaceX expressed interest in extending the operational lifespan of each Crew Dragon to up to 15 flights. This plan depends on the results of an ongoing certification campaign, including an analysis of Endeavour after its return to Earth. If successful, Endeavour and its counterparts could remain operational well into the latter half of the decade. This extension will proceed cautiously due to the added complexities. Currently, only one Dragon spacecraft, Freedom, is certified to rotate NASA crews to the ISS. With Crew Dragon, SpaceX has secured a coveted place in commercial spaceflight, the first provider to offer orbital crew missions to private customers independently of the government. For these missions, SpaceX has free reign to customize the vehicle as it pleases, to suit its own needs or those of its customers. For example, after flying Crew-1, Resilience had its docking port replaced with a transparent cupola dome after the Private Inspiration-4 mission. Subsequently, Resilience received an airlock hatch to support EVAs during Polaris Dawn. But these changes aren't entirely without consequence. NASA will not fly ISS crews aboard any modified Crew Dragon. This policy excludes resilience from future ISS rotations due to the changes that SpaceX has made to support other customers. In August, SpaceX revealed the upcoming Fram 2 mission, a private research flight to a high-inclination orbit that will study the Earth's poles. In a poetic twist, Fram 2, named for the historic polar exploration vessel Fram, will fly aboard Endurance, which also shares its name with a polar ship. Like Resilience, Endurance will receive a cupola for the mission and will likewise exit NASA's approved ISS rotation fleet.
Between Endeavour reaching its current flight limit and the departure of Resilience and Endurance, Freedom is the only Dragon spacecraft currently available to fly NASA astronauts and is accordingly slated to fly Crew-9 later this month. This simple fact puts pressure on SpaceX to make the most of its remaining NASA-certified fleet. Analysis of Endeavour to support a lifetime extension will likely continue to next year. Meanwhile, 5th Crew Dragon, the unnamed C-213, is still under construction. C-213 was originally planned to fly the 11th U.S. Crew Vehicle slot USCV-11 late next year, while Starliner would fly its first rotation, Starliner 1, as USCV-10. But the scheduled disruption caused by the uncrewed return of Starliner CFT has compelled SpaceX to support the 10th slot as Crew-10 in February of this year, six months earlier than planned. Now, not much is known about the status of C-213. After its announcement in 2022, the spacecraft got planned to be operational last year, although until very recently its flight was set for late this year. If for any reason the spacecraft can't be completed and certified before Crew-10, SpaceX could potentially push Endeavour to bridge the gap pending its post-flight analysis. In either case, the margin's going to be close to bringing a second Crew Dragon back to service for NASA. If SpaceX and NASA approve additional flights for each vehicle, the pressure will be significantly reduced, putting Crew Dragon on an even footing with Starliner as Boeing plans to complete its ISS obligations using just two spacecraft. Furthermore, if Starliner can start rotations next year, NASA-certified Dragon spacecraft only need to fly once a year. Still, questions remain for Dragon's manifest. While SpaceX will most likely be able to restore its ISS fleet to two spacecraft in short order, commercial customers complicate the situation. Axiom Space's fourth private astronaut mission, AX-4, is set to launch to the ISS next spring, likely requiring either Freedom or C-213. Vast Space's Haven 1 station could launch late next year and Crew Dragon's on the books to transport its first crew. As a private mission, Vast 1 could also use Resilience or Endurance, though either would need to be re-equipped with a standard docking port. Looking even further ahead, Dragon's prospects seem bright. In four years, as the only American system capable of sending crew to LEO, Crew Dragons garnered some serious attention from other commercial players. Future LEO destinations like Axiom Station, Starlab, Orbital Reef, or Vast Stations have an exceptionally well-proven option in SpaceX, whereas Boeing's troubled Starliner may yet struggle to be commercially attractive. Crew Dragons also demonstrated its utility to conduct free-flying research, which NASA anticipates will be a key part of the commercial LEO ecosystem. With such a bountiful demand, will five Crew Dragons be enough? The future of humans in LEO is hard to know, but it seems the next generation of commercial activity could persist for decades. Crew Dragon's a shoe-in for this market, yet SpaceX's attention lies elsewhere. Starship's the company's mission statement incarnate, but its usefulness as a crew shuttle is tenuous. Much larger than the space shuttle and outsized for even the most ambitious commercial stations, Starship is a bit of an awkward fit for Dragon's niche. Factor in an uncertain schedule and avant-garde risk posture, and Starship seems unlikely to dethrone SpaceX's golden goose anytime soon. For now, Crew Dragon's place in the world is clear. Despite the challenges of the past, Crew Dragon has but one final maze to navigate as the year draws to a close. After years of bearing the load of U.S. crew access, the commercial crew program's original mission of dissimilar redundancy may finally come to pass next year and Crew Dragon may in turn relax into its final legacy serving the ISS. That's it for today's episode. Thanks for checking us out, and we'll see you next time. Bye.